right. It's, gonna, it's like 11.35-ish right now. And my wife, she's going to go on her job interview tomorrow. So she wants me to go to Walg a 24-hour Walgreens, which is nowhere around here. <laughs> you put this stop there. Right. Sorry, YouTube. There you go. I don't know if you can see much. I still got it in my mouth. Um, you definitely can't see me, so I'm going to keep it face forward as I drive in the night. To get to Walgreens. And also stop by Kinko's, a 24 hour Kinko's, where I can pick up a copy of her resume. We already, that's one cool thing I like. Um, you can email stuff to Kinko's and they will get it. It's, it's you know, they're usually it's like USA, the store number. The one we're going to is store number 0197 at FedEx. Kinko's.com, I think, but FedExOffice.com, I believe. Oh, Kinko's. <laughs> I wanna, why did FedEx get rid of that name? But, you know, I guess it's the same reason why Microsoft is getting rid of desktop. Get used to it. <laughs> I don't know. It's, you know I'm, I'm going to, I have to say I'm very easy when it comes to getting used to new software to um, to new software that's coming out but Kinko's I've always known about Kinko's in fact I used to work at Kinko's many many years ago um, well not many years ago it was like 19, no, 2000 it was right before I joined the army I um, Right before I joined the Army, I worked at Kinko's, and I was um, a digital, uh, what was the exact title, uh, digital, digital reproduction specialist or something like that. And basically, my job was to, in, you know, to um, receive PDF files by way of the email, just like how we did it, but it wasn't resumes, it was like books or pamphlets, brochures. And, and I took specific orders. Like, if page 10 and 11 had a colorful chart, I'll make the rest black and white. Uh, so, 99 page booklet, they wanted page 10, 11, page 70, page 82 to be colored. I was the one that put that together. And we had these special machines, um, copiers, Xerox, <laughs> copiers, that. Um, what we could specify black and white in color. There were two copiers, and basically I sent the PDF file to the computer and I told it which page to print in color. All right, let me just make this turn here real quick. Make sure I'm not running over anybody or anything. And, um, and I told it, okay, I want these certain pages, and the two copiers work together. Now, because color takes a little bit longer, the color copier starts spitting out in order, in, in correlated order, all the color pages that it needed. When it, when the black and white knew that the color printer is caught up to a certain point, let's say you need 100 copies made, at 50 copies, it knew that the black and white, the black and white was fast. It was like, choo, 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 choo. the color was like, choo, 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 choo. You know, it was that was the fastest it went back in those days. I'm sure it's a lot faster now. But um, and what it did was it put together the booklet for you. And then we told the printer to bind it. We either had and it depends upon what kind of binding if you want it. If it was the kind of binding where they wanted some pages folded like a book, um, then we had to do that by hand. And basically. We told the printer um, to bind so many, to fold so many pages, and then we took a special glue and um, the binding that they wanted, and we uh, we actually did the binding there, and I put together the book. I mean, we literally put together the book, and that was expensive because it was done by hand. 
there were some where, you know, like a magazine that had a staples in the center, we had to, um, you know, put it through a folding press, or the printer did it for you. I, I actually remember there were two different ways to do it. We either did it manually, or we told the printer to do it for us. And then it will put the staples right in the center, and it folded just nicely. It was perfectly done. Um, sometimes we have to cut ourselves, you know, if it was um, a small booklet or a brochure, you know, a pamphlet, you know, we have to cut ourselves, and uh, they and the people told us the size, and I had to literally make sure that every single copy came out perfect. So in order to do the quality assurance check, I checked every tenth page to check for bleeds and, you know, color runs and a little bunch of stuff, you know, stuff that can happen in a printer that smudges, you know, fingerprints, stuff like that. So that was my job, and I, and I did big orders, you know. And that's because at the time, Macintosh was the only computer that had that capability of um, doing desktop publishing. Now you can do desktop publishing on a PC just as good as a, as a Mac. You really don't need a Mac to do desktop publishing. The reason why people still use Macs is because that's what they're used to. You know, they use Macs all their lives for desktop publishing, and they want to stick with Macs. But these days, Adobe makes all the software for desktop publishing for PCs. So you can have a PC that can um, do desktop publishing, just as good as a Mac. You can have a PC edit video just as good as a Mac. You know, um, they don't have um, all the Mac editing software that you can get on a Mac because those are made by Apple themselves. Apple makes the video editing software for a Macintosh. But you can get Sony Vegas, and there are other video editing programs that are just as good as um, iMovie and Final Cut Pro and a bunch of other software. Windows Movie Maker is very basic and I really don't like the Windows Movie Maker that, that came with Windows 7. I used it many times. In fact, I used it on the first two V-logs of the movie infrastructure. But I found this really nice program, and I'm going to another subject here. I found this really nice program called VideoPad. It's free. You can pay. You can pay for it if you like, which will include more features. But the free version is just as good, and it, and it does it does okay. It's not professional video editing, but it's it's better than Windows Movie Maker. I'll say it like that. Actually, Windows Movie Maker was the better Microsoft editor than Windows Live Movie Editor. There's a difference. Windows Live Movie Editor is not that great. Um, sorry, Microsoft. Fail. Windows 8, win. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I mean, you know, a lot of good reviews on Windows 8. A lot of great reviews uh, by professional reviewers, you know. The only problem is people have an issue is, is with non touch screen computers. I guarantee you that in the next year, you're just like um, you don't find CRT monitors anymore getting work unless you went to a palm shop, and I, I doubt even they have it, because palm shops are very picky about the stuff that they buy. It would be next to impossible to find CRT monitors that are for sale in a normal store. So. Just like how flat screen monitors replace CRT monitors, just like how widescreen monitors replace those regular tube TVs, just like how fuel injection replaces carburetors. I don't know that much about cars, so if I made a mistake on, on that last quote, I'm sorry. You're just not going to find it anymore unless you ask somebody, hey, can I buy that tube from you? like a neighbor who just bought a big screen TV 
and they have a you know a nice 42 inch tube, and you're like, hey, can I buy that off you? Yeah. But even then, you still need a digital TV tuner if you want to pick up over the way TV. Otherwise, you got to get cable in order to watch TV on it. So you know, it's uh, it's different. Um, Windows 8 is going to replace the way we do computers, the Metro, or whatever Microsoft's going to call it, whenever they decide to announce the new name for what's now called Metro. Well, we know it's Metro. It's, it's, it's going to get replaced, and we've got to get used to it. If you don't like it, fine, an alternative. 